What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this next video, we have to solve for x in this polynomial equation here. And we have to solve for it as an exact value. So we have x squared minus four x to the power of two equals four times x squared minus four x minus four. Now this question was actually sent to me by a student and it's a pretty cool, unique question. I wanted to make a video for it. Now, usually, what happens when we get a polynomial equation like this is we want to bring everything to one side, expand it, and then factor that side using the factor theorem. But in this case, it's actually not going to work because if we do that, so let me just show you the wrong way to go about it and then we'll show you the right way. So this x squared minus four x to the power of two, we can rewrite this as that, right? So if we foil out this left side, that's what we're doing, we're expanding, we would expand this and then we'll bring it all to the left side. So this would end up being x to the four minus, this would be four x cubed minus four x cubed, so that'd be minus eight x cubed. And then this times this would be plus 16x squared, uh, give me a sec here. Yeah, so that's what, if we expand everything, that's what this left side would equal. And then over here, we'd expand this. And then we'd bring everything over. And when we do that, Bring the four over, 16x squared minus four x squared, that would be 12x squared. Bring this over plus 16x plus four is equal to zero. So notice we end up with this quadratic equation. So this and this are actually the exact same thing and this is gonna give us the same solutions as this. The problem is what's gonna happen here as a spoiler alert, is there's going to be two solutions to this, but they're gonna be decimal solutions. And in this question, we have to give it as an exact value. So there can't be any decimals in our solution, right? So it's gonna be in terms of radicals, it's gonna be a radical expression. And getting that radical expression from here is very difficult to do. You pretty much can't do it here. The only way that you can get solutions here is to get the decimal solution. So doing a bunch of trial and error and really figuring out what that X value is gonna be that makes this left side equal to zero, what those two X values are gonna be. But that's gonna take you a super long time. And so in this case, expanding everything, bringing it to one side, using the factor theorem on this, where we're plugging in X values, seeing it, when is it gonna equal zero? There's not gonna be any integers that are gonna satisfy that. It's gonna be decimal numbers, right? So this way, expanding everything, in, uh, expanding everything, bringing it to one side is gonna take us super long. So what we can do is we can actually work from here first. And what we can recognize is that this x squared minus four x bracket is also showing up over here, x squared minus four x. And so what we can do is we can actually introduce another variable, let's say m, and we can make it equal to x squared minus four x. And so now we'd plug in m over here, we'd have m squared equals four m minus four. And hopefully now you see what's happening here. This ends up being a quadratic equation, m squared minus four m plus four when we bring everything over. And then this over here, it actually factors into m minus two times m minus two, which is m minus two squared. And so from here, we can tell that m is equal to two. The m value for this quadratic equation, which is the same as this, is equal to two once we factor it. And so now we're not solving for m, we're solving for x, but we know m is equal to x squared minus four x. So if m has to equal two, 
right, from this, it means that x squared minus 4x has to also equal 2. And notice that makes sense. If this is equal to 2, if we plug it in here, we would end up with 2 to the power 2, which is 4, 4 times 2, which is 8, and then minus 4 would be 4. So we'd have 4 on the right side, 4 on the left side. And the same thing here, right? This is just a simplified version of this. Plugging in 2, 2 would make both of those sides equal. And so it means that that bracket, both of these brackets, x squared minus 4x, has to equal 2. And so from here, we can now just solve this. And notice we're just left with a quadratic equation to solve. That's not going to factor smoothly. We're going to have to put that in the quadratic formula. But nevertheless, it is a quadratic. And then we can get the exact value from the quadratic formula. We know that the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b uh, squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right, and so now we could take this, um, the a value here is one, the b value is negative four, the c value is negative two. We could take those parameters, plug them in here. So negative negative four would be positive four plus or minus negative four squared minus four times one times negative two all over two times one. So we'd have four plus or minus the square root this would be 16 minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 would give us positive 8. So 16 plus 8 would give us 24 over here. So we'd have 4 plus or minus root 24 over 2. Right? And now you can see how we're going to get that exact value. This actually simplifies the root 24. That simplifies to uh, root 4 times root 6 which would be 2 root 6, right? Root 24, 2 root 6, those are the exact same thing. So we can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus 2 root 6 all over 2. And then from here, a couple of ways we can do this. We could split this up into two fractions. And then notice this would be 2 plus or minus this and this cancel out, so we just end up with a root 6. Or another way, the way that I prefer to do it, because this is not always going to simplify, the denominators are not always going to go away with this method. So from here, what I like to do is factor out a 2 from the top, And then we have the two on the bottom, and then these twos cancel out. And again, that's not always going to happen. Like this might be like a four. So then two goes to four twice. So there'd be a two left here. But in this case, there's just a one left. But that's why I don't like this method. I like this method instead. So final answer, whichever way you do, is two plus or minus root six. So the two solutions are two plus root six or two minus root 6. Those are the two solutions as an exact value to this polynomial equation. So you got to be careful with these kinds of questions. This is a very uh, unique case, a very special case, but something like this can come up potentially. So if you expand everything, you're getting stuck and the solutions are going to be unique values. Maybe look in the original equation of where maybe you can bring in another variable, make it more simple in order to get those exact value solutions.